Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing a retorque of our head studs. We just had to scare with the uh, with the coolant tank and the uh, possible blown head gasket. So I'll show you guys. We got the motor torn down. Pretty much smooth valve cover, the rocker arm, and the harness. I've already undid the bolts on here, so I'm just gonna pull these off, the rockers, and then we're gonna get to retorquing all these uh, head studs. Gonna retorque them down to 150 foot pounds. And uh, I like laying everything out over here so you see it. There's obviously the valve cover that's upside down. Next will come off this wire harness. Um, make sure you unplug it right here and right here. It actually sits in the motor like so. When you're removing the screws right here or these small eight millimeter bolts, don't do it with anything power. Just do it with like a, a random, you know, ratchet because if you mess one of these up, you got to buy a whole new harness. And if you mess up an injector, it's going to be an expensive mistake. So, and then next comes the rocker cover. And then now we're on to the rockers. So I have all the, I have the, the number six rocker and the rockers out. I got them labeled here. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you got a little bit of a higher mileage rock uh, truck that you haven't done this to before, I'd recommend taking out this bolt and sliding out this cam and inspecting it to make sure there's no scoring or anything like that. Um, my truck's pretty low mileage, so I don't have any damage as I just check that one and I'll check the other one. But it's something just to be aware of when you're doing these. You know, you don't want to have to tear the truck apart again later on for the same issue and you can just inspect it now and correct the problem now. These bridges, Forgot. I'm not exactly sure, but these are what go down on your your exhaust and your intake uh, valves. They kind of go down. They go something like this, and it, that's how the rocker pushes both those valves open. The dimple right here, the dot. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, that dot usually goes towards the intake side or the driver side, so they all sit at kind of like an angle like this. So just make sure all those dimples go towards the driver side. Just remove them the way they came out. And if you look under. This hole right here is smaller, and that hole's a little bit bigger. I think that's intended to why it goes that way. But if you look at both of these, they're the same exact size. So don't worry about mixing them up. Try to keep them in original position, but I know this is my exhaust side, which is the bigger arm, and this is the intake side. So I just keep them on here as such, and I'm just gonna go pull the other five real quick. All right, so got her all tore down. This is where you want to get her to do the head studs. You could probably just get away with removing the intake rocker, but I just went ahead and removed both. That way I had an easy exposure to all the fasteners or the uh, the nuts for the, dang it, head studs. So I'm going to get my torque wrench, another 150 foot-pound torque on there, and then I'm going to put her back together, and then I'm probably going to adjust the valve lash again just to make sure. Kept this uh, piece of paper right here. This tells you the torque sequence. This is what I got from ARP. If you guys didn't know, Glacier Diesel has an awesome R&R &R manual of how to do head studs, like top to bottom, step to step. And that I use that as well because, you know, there's torques on the rocker arms, there's torques on the rocker cover, things like that that need to be done. So I'll put a link in the description, but that's what I'm gonna, I use that for when I actually removed uh, these one by one. And if you are doing the ARP head studs for the first time, this is how you get it. This is where you break it down and you start removing a bolt and replacing it with a stud and then putting the, the washer and the nut on. So this is uh, me just pretty much retorquing it. All right, kind of a standstill right now. I'm having my buddy come over with his torque wrench. I just want to get uh, another torque wrench on it just to verify it. Um, mine's kind of got a little slop in the handle, so I just want to double check it just to make sure. Uh, what I did do was I turned the crank to top dead center. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but I'll see if I can zoom in on it. 
you guys can see the TDC there. It's kind of there. It is. That's top dead center. Just make sure that's tw at a 12 o'clock position, and that's when you start testing your um, your valve lash. Whenever I get those back on there. So sorry for the camera craziness. Tugger, Tug, you want some water? You want to get some water? Let's get water. Spoiled. Here. Is it good? So here I am, retorquing these bad boys, and I'm sweating my butt off. I hope to God I, this torque wrench is right, because I'm getting quite a few, uh, maybe like a half a turn to a full turn out of each uh, head stud. Um, my torque wrench uh, maybe took a crap, you know? It, it could have been a POS from the start, and maybe this could have been part of my problem. Um, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about with my old torque wrench. And my buddy just brought his over. I wanted to use his just to double verify. And obviously I'm glad I went that route. So I'll show you my torque wrench and what it's doing. And I'll let you guys make your own opinion. So here's my, here's my torque wrench Craftsman um, torque wrench. Had it turned all the way up to 150. It's kind of hard to see, but. Look at the handle. This is without me doing anything. So I had this bad boy cranked all the way down due to the simple fact that it's 150 at max and locked it in place and put it on every single, all 26 of them earlier today. All of them are, all of them are down. Um, my buddy brings his over. I mean, take it for granted, it's a Pittsburgh. It's a, it's a, um, whatchamacallit, a Harbor Freight brand, a little shorter. Have it on that one stud right now because I'm about to torque it and I'm getting turns on everything. I went down, I'll tell you this right now, and this is freaking scary, is I got down to 80 um, and I put some torque on it and it moved and it moved a little bit more. So bumped it up to 100, did all of my at 100 and now I'm back to 130 is what I'm doing right now and I'm getting some movement on them. So I said earlier, probably getting a half turn to a full turn. I'm probably getting about a full turn um, to where I'm at right now. It's scary. Um, Cause makes me question the install that I did in the beginning. You know, no one's perfect. This is the first time I've done it. Um, now I'm going back to retorque it. You shouldn't have to do that with 625s. But um, yeah, I called places like AutoZone, O'Reilly's, places like that. And I asked them, I was like, hey, um, looking at renting a torque wrench from you. And I was like, I'm wondering when's the last time they've been calibrated. You'd think I'd ask them if they seen something crazy, right? No. Uh, in the military, we, we get our stuff calibrated all the time because it has to be within specs. Um, one of my buddies I, I asked, who's a mechanic, I said, hey man, um, do you know anybody that calibrates torque wrenches? He kind of looked at me like, are you serious? I was like, yeah. I was like, I need to get my torque wrench calibrated if not fixed. And so I, I, I don't know. I mean, what is you got, your guys' thoughts on that? Maybe I'm being anal retentive, but at the same time, I know I'm doing it right. You know, I'm not just slapping it together. So it's kind of a it's kind of a weird spot to be in right now. Still trying to uh, get the rest of these uh, torqued up. And I'm telling you, man, I'm putting some ass into these things. I have literally I'm, I'm breaking a sweat just doing these torques. Um, it's scary, but we're gonna get it done. Um, it's not really scary. It's just it's scary that I've been driving around like this for. X amount of months, you know, a couple, I say about three months since I've installed the, uh, the head studs. And I know they don't expand that much, if at all, you know, being a 625s, but, um, yeah, all this movement I'm getting out of them isn't, isn't crazy or isn't, a isn't nice. And I'm afraid actually that I might snap one because I'm getting so much movement on there and God forbid if I snap one, then I got to remove the whole damn head anyway. So yeah, I'll quit rambling. 
All right, on the last round, I just got done with nine and 10. I'm on 11, which is that one behind that freaking coolant spout that comes up, which is a pain in the butt. That's the next one to be torqued. I'm on the final round of 150. Man, I am exhausted. Uh, so I touched base with Cam uh, over everything diesel. Um, I just wanted to make sure, like, you know, kind of run some thoughts by him. Um, this is the, how you say it? When I, when I started on this torque wrench, I did 100, 130, and 150. It's a freaking workout. So, yeah, there's no way in hell I had it right the first time. I know it wasn't that hot. I mean, it wasn't like it's warm out, and I wasn't, like, out of breath and exhausted, man. But, whew, I mean, me, him, him and I are about the same build. So I was like, dude, were you, like, was this kicking your butt? And he was like, yeah, dude, I took, like, 8 to 10 breaks. So here I am taking some breaks because it is a workout. God, man, if you slip on that, like, if, if, if the... If the Torque wrench slips off that nut, <laughs> stand by. You're gonna go flying off that truck or bust your knuckle up pretty bad. So I'm at uh, the 10th, or I'm about to go to a number 11 out of 26 on the final round of the 150. And then we'll get the top end put back together with the rockers and we'll start doing some uh, valve lashing. Whew, what a day. And here we are to put the rockers back on. I did all the first five. I'm gonna show you the last one kind of get an idea nipple goes towards the driver boom boom same with the intake side and then when you put this on make sure you get it to hit the push rods at the back of the rocker I'll show you what I mean so setting this on here is one assembly but you want to make sure you're hitting in here and then you torque your, your bolts down in here these go down to 28 foot-pounds Now time, time to check valve lash. All right, we got the truck at top dead center. And the way we know that we're at the right position is because our number one intake and our number one exhaust are able to move, right? So we got that. So in order, what we're gonna do top dead center number one is we're gonna do intake one, intake two, and intake four. We're gonna check the lash on those. And then we're also gonna check exhaust one exhaust three and exhaust five sorry if you can't see that then we're going to rotate 360 degrees to where the top dead center is back at 12 o'clock again and then we're going to check intake three right here five and six and then we're also going to check exhaust two four and six and you're checking the lash or the spacing between your intake rocker arm and the actual bridge itself. Intake should be 10 thousandths and exhaust should be 20 thousandths. So in order to adjust it, what you do is you loosen this nut and then you can rotate this with an Allen key. And what that does is it pushes it down, down or up, depending on where you need it at. So I've already done the, the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of these. The top dead center one. All right, just rotated the crank 360. We're back at top dead center. Now we need to check the other one, the other sides that we didn't check. 
and I'm gonna start with number six because you gotta check the intake and exhaust on both of those, so. <clears throat> Sorry you guys can't see, see my armpit, but. All right, so three, five, and six on the intake and two, four, six on the exhaust. All good to go, just I had to make a couple adjustments. Put the rocker box cover on, you go from middle to out, and we'll torque this to 18 foot pounds. While you're doing this, just give it a little tug. There's not like, there's no text. I'm sure there is a specification for it, but just a little bit of a, just enough to get it snug on there. There's no reason to go crazy tight. You freaking break one of these injector lugs, you're done. Call it a day, go drink a beer, and then go spend a couple hundred bucks on a new injector. So, you definitely don't want to do that. Don't forget to plug your harness back in. And just the valve cover and we're done. Buy this piece of shit. It cost me a head gasket. Alright, so that job's finally done. Got the valve cap cover off with that going. She looks pretty, I need to wipe her down, but what a hell of a day. Um, supposed to be like a 20 minute job. Turned into a probably four or five hour evolution. But man, I'm glad I did it. You just never know what you're gonna find and what mistakes you may have made in the past. But live and learn, nobody's experts. But happy Cinco de Mayo. Everybody enjoy a cold beverage. I'm about to have one myself, so. Y'all have a good one. Please like, comment, subscribe. Until the next upload, we'll see you guys later.